bakıyorum. Good morning, Miss Turner. Thank you. We did Australia today. Miss Turner said I could draw a picture of a platypus because I couldn't spell it. We're oh, very lucky to have such a good governess. Now then, last one to clear away has to sing God Save the King without laughing. Well, what have you been up to, I wonder? I beg your pardon? Name in the newspaper and everything. <sighs> Nanny Sims is just teasing. Now then, wash your hands before lunch and go! Go, 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 go! Teasing, eh? If Miss Hannah Randall, last heard of in the service of Lady Harmonsworth of Linthorpe, near Halifax, would contact Mrs Scott and Mackay, solicitors of Knightsbridge, she will hear something to her advantage. Let me see. I may not have been a lady's maid, but I can read every bit as well as you. I'm sure you can, Nanny Simmons. I'd just like to see for myself. Funny, that. I had the impression you left there under a bit of a cloud, as it were, being you never speak about them or anything. I know as much as you do, Nanny Simmons. I'll ask Mrs Hutchinson if you can use the telephone, if you like. Or I could telephone for you if you're a bit nervous. No, thank you. The master and missus seem well enough pleased with him. The boy hasn't said anything. Still thinks we're playing spies. Where are you going with him? You told me to clean the Kentis, so I'm going to clean him. Put him down there. Now are you getting on with Nanny now? Not the case. All I'm doing is being nice as pie all round. Anyway, I've hardly seen Nanny. Good. Just you behave yourself. I know what you're like with the girls. Don't we just? Newspaper. What? Look, I'm a big boy now. Hey, keep me head down. Stay in a safe distance from everyone. Just as long as you don't seem standoffish. You don't want to put anyone's back up. Right, mother. I'm going to need help staying on the tightrope. I'll ask for it, all right? Buddy, have you ever met a spy? How should I know the whole point of being a spy is that you don't tell anyone? Go and put your good suit on, Master Albert. Why? Because I say so. You've a very special surprise in store. You're going to visit your brothers at school this afternoon with Mama and Papa. Am I good -er? So there's absolutely no reason she shouldn't go, is there? I shall look after baby Charles. It's nothing I expect, just my old employers trying to contact me. You've probably left something behind. Yes. Then if they've gone to all the trouble of placing the advertisement, you're duty-bound to answer it. I'll go and speak to Madam. Oh. Run and say goodbye to Bertie. What's the matter? Why don't you want to go? Matty, I was dismissed from my last job without references. I had to forge a letter to get the job here. You never did. Please don't think ill of me. I had very good reasons. You say so? Miss, do you think that's what the advertisement's about? Well, I can't think of anything else. Is that for serving Sunday dinner? No, it is not. It's for upstairs Sunday lunch. Staff are eating cold Sunday night. What? Me and Cook are off out Sunday. His Majesty King Edward is paying for our dinner, isn't he? I'm surprised they're going out with the King's dinner, seeing the coronation's off till he's better. They wouldn't dare. We're off to the one in Covent Garden. Kirby the greengrocer says they've got Chinese lanterns, flowers, the lot. Don't worry. Cook will leave you something nice on a plate. Yeah, the white bonnet with the white trim, I think, Lydia, now we're in July. Yes, Nanny. <laughs> Will your friends be in the park? I expect so, if that's all right. I hear very satisfactory reports of Nanny Wickham. Very highly spoken of. She's nice. Nobody seems to know anything about Nursemaid Randolph, mind. Well, she's nice too. Mm. I'm told she was seen cuddling the infant. In that nursery, we feel it's a, an encouraging start. I was told I might expect a prompt response to our advertisement. Now then, you 
are Miss Hannah Randall, currently resigning at... Why do you need to know that? So that the postman will know where to deliver any correspondence. Number five, Berkeley Square, London. Now, Miss Randall. What sits in the smallest drawer on the left-hand side of Lady Harmonsworth's dressing table? A small silver box chased with ivy leaves containing a lock of her own mother's hair. Good. That confirms your identity. Now, I am given to understand that you are the mother of William John Randall, born on the second day of February, 1902, and fathered by the late William Albert Harmon, Viscount Stebbins of Linthorpe, near Halifax. Miss Randall, I'm not here to pass judgment. Is my information correct? Yes. What is all this about? I am instructed to offer this for your inspection. Five hundred pounds. Which is yours on signature of this document. Allow me. In consideration of five hundred pounds, I hereby relinquish all parental, legal, and moral rights in the infant, William John Randall, and give him for all time into the care and keeping of his paternal grandmother, the Countess of Harmonsworth. I pledge on oath that I will make no attempt to see, speak, or make she contact. Wants to buy my baby. Miss Randall. She wants to buy my baby. She had me dismissed from service. She threatened to disinherit her only son for his association with me. She instructed the local doctor not to deliver my child, the local parson not to christen my child. She had me cast out of my home, and now she wants to buy my baby. Miss Never, not till hell freezes over, will I let that woman near my son. Good afternoon, Randall. Just one mint humbug, please. They're my favourite. No, they're for Nanny. Givens, what's in there? What's in where? In there. Three times I've seen his lordship going in and coming out. Always when he don't think anyone's there. Always locking the door ever so carefully. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Considering what's in there. What? I'm saying. You won't give me a mint humbug. I'm not telling you anything. Well, you know, Lady Constance is his lordship's second wife. Well, that's where he keeps the first one. No. True. All wrapped up and embalmed like one of them Egyptian mummies. <sighs> Only he didn't do it as well as the Egyptian see. She's in there, falling to pieces. You! How can you say such disgusting things in front of his little ears? <laughs> We're not listening to any more of his nonsense, are we? With respect, Lady Harmonsworth, I think that any mother is entitled to be reassured as to the secure and continued welfare of her child before giving it up. I am not giving him up. Then you are more selfish and self-serving than I thought. The child will be brought up by accomplished nurses and governesses. At the appropriate time, he will be sent to his father's old school. If he shares my son's intelligence, he will be sent up to Oxford. If not, you will be found suitable employment on the estate. What can you offer him? His own mother. Then let us hope he is grateful to his own mother when he learns what she has turned down on his behalf. Why? 
Why now? Why were there no generous gestures a year ago when they were so sorely needed? A year ago, I still had my son and thought to have him till my death, not his. There was a future which might have, would have held the prospect of reconciliation. You robbed me of that future as you robbed me of mine. How dare you? You seduced William from his virtue and from the goodwill of his parents. I did not. Had it not been for you, he would never have taken part in that ridiculous race. Had it not been for you, my son would be alive and well. That is a lie. You owe me a son! Ladies, I beg you. Now I understand. You want to buy a child to keep him hidden out of sight, out of mind. You tell me that you do want a son. That he shall have all the love and favours of a son. That he shall inherit titles and estates as a son. Then we may have grounds for a discussion. Until then, Lady Harmonsworth, we do not. Good day to you, sir. Calm yourself, Lady Harmonsworth. Intense grief breeds a terrible kind of madness, Mr. Scott. I must apologize. The tall cook you lot needed sweetening up. So she made a cake especially. How kind. No, I don't suppose I could have Sunday night off, could I? Sorry, Pringle. I'm off to the King's dinner down my house. What will it be like? I'll tell you. We've got pianos, singers, everything like that. Everyone in London's going somewhere nice on Sunday to have their King's dinner. Except me. I'm having something cold on a plate. Oh, never mind. I'll keep you company. There. That should keep you going for a bit. Thank you. What would it entail, Mr Scott? Well, one can appoint whoever one wishes as an heir to the estate. It would be a question of Lord Harmonsworth making the appropriate change in his will. But to inherit a title would mean a legal adoption of the child. How many would know of his true parentage? As many as you choose to tell outside this room. I see. Lady Harmonsworth, is this a course of action you would seriously wish to consider? He is my grandson. If the girl is adamant. Well, I, I could put a new proposal to her. If Lord Harmonsworth... Mr Scott, my husband knows nothing of my visit to London. If I am to go to the considerable effort of persuading him that this is a right and proper course of action, I myself must be certain that this is indeed my grandchild. One never knows with these girls. I wish to see the baby. Now then, what happened at the solicitor's office? Come in. Good afternoon, Nanny Simmons. Sorry to interrupt your tea. This was delivered by hand five minutes ago. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. Yes, of course. Tea, please, Randall. My principal wishes to advance negotiations begun today in a manner satisfactory to all parties. What's that supposed to mean? Is that letter addressed to me? Annie Simmons, this is a private letter. In this nursery, my girl, I decide what's private.
I help you, Weston? No. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. It's Gibbons, you see, sir. He was, um... Young footmen are notorious for their juvenile sense of humour, I'm afraid. They mean no harm as a rule, but in your position, I would take steps to establish a firm line. What do you mean? A line between acceptable teasing and taking liberties, Lydia. Oh, right. Oh, you really had me going for a minute, Mr. Fowler. He's awful with those stories, as Gibbons. <laughs> Mr. Fowler. Ah, Fowler. We're off now. I won't detain you long. As most of you know, Mrs. Hutchinson and I had intended to leave for India at the end of the summer. However, circumstances dictate that I now must take up my posting at the earliest possible moment. Uh, therefore, we shall be departing for Southampton tomorrow and sailing from there first thing on Monday morning. As it's a relatively short posting of one year, we have decided that Master Albert should remain here and that the household should function as normal. We have every confidence that things will run smoothly under Mr. Bowles' supervision. And our solicitor, Mr. Thorndyke here, is authorised to deal with any queries or problems that may arise during our absence. That is all. On behalf of the household staff, sir, may I wish you and Mrs. Hutchison on a splendid voyage and the very best of good fortunes in your new appointment. Thank you. I didn't say I didn't want to go. I merely said I was a little surprised by your sudden affection for the Hutchinsons. I've always enjoyed her company. Besides, you'll enjoy the gardens at the club. Edward, I want a word with you. Oh, yeah? What about? You lied to me. You're not a spy at all, are you? <clears throat> If you use it all is rather a lark, I think. Is that how you regard the King's dinner, George? Oh, it'll be quite jolly. Lord Chief Justice told me he'd never peeled a potato in his life. <laughs> but it's more symbolic, I suppose. You know, the highest in the land, dishing up supper to the lowest. Absolutely right and proper. It would be a wrench for Mrs. Hutchinson to leave the boys, surely. More of a wrench to see him popping off with cholera or beriberi or whatever. No place for nippers, India. No. No. Let's just hope the lowest in the land don't see it as an excuse for idle mockery. Well, I shall don a pinafore and wield a ladle with a stout heart. And if anyone cares to laugh at me, they're jolly welcome to. Of course, it'll suit Mrs. Hutchinson down to the ground. She's been dying to be a memside for years. <laughs> Excuse me a moment. Sinjin. Delightful surprise. Captain Mason. Uh, Captain John Harding, this is Mrs. Sinjin. Madam. Frightful bounder, this one. Promised me a horse race in the park tomorrow afternoon, and now tells me he has to be on duty or some such nonsense. I shall have to race on my own now, shan't I? In which case, you'll be certain to win, won't you? Let us hope so. Said... No, no, no. Now, look. You're the one said I was a spy, all right? Not me. What are you doing in the storeroom? Are you trying to steal things? Excuse me, Master Tom. I have my duties to attend to. I want to know! If you don't tell me, I'll tell Papa about you hiding. I can't talk here. Right. Come with me. Mr. Andor, your uh, conversation of 
yesterday, led Lady Harmsworth to understand that she had approached the question of her grandson in a rather simplistic way. She would consider adopting Billy as a legal heir. If terms can be arranged that are acceptable to all sides. Well, she can't cut me out of his life. Nobody needs to know I'm his mother, but I have to be near him. Miss Randall, Lady Harmsworth has Billy's best interests at heart. If your presence contributes to his welfare, she'll go along with that. Well, she never did before. She wasn't a lonely, frightened old woman before. I propose that Miss Thomas and myself take young Billy to Lady Harmsworth at her hotel, allow her to satisfy herself that it is indeed her grandson, and then return him to you in no more than a couple of hours. Now, perhaps tomorrow would be suitable, if you can make the afternoon available. I, I'm not sure. Miss Randall, you have my word that all will be conducted with absolute propriety. I shall be personally responsible for Billy's safety. I'm good with children, Miss Randall. I'll see he comes to no harm. You took my place as her new lady's maid. That's right. How do you get on with her? I'm thick-skinned. It helps. Give me a piece of paper. I'll write down the address. No skin off my nose if the old man wants to go on jollifications. You'll look after me, won't you? Indeed, Master Hugh. Your trunk's in your room, sir. Riley's unpacking it for you now. Oh, Riley's still here, is she? Good, eh? Don't go away. I've got something for you. An anarchist track from the Paris Revolutionaries. Should be just up your street, eh, Fowler? And, um, something a little more pictorial for you? Most thoughtful, sir. My pleasure. Right. Nice to see you both. I'll go up and say hello to Riley. Cheeky little man. What does he think I am? A servant. I'm gonna ban Jam Roly-Poly between April and September. What Nanny wants, Nanny gets. Mrs McCluskey, has Tom been down here? I sent him down ages ago to fetch the makings for peppermint creams. What you done? Lost him? I searched the entire house. He didn't go out through here. We wouldn't have let him do that, dear. Not on his own. Oh, Lord. What time are the master and mistress due home? Not for a bit yet, I shouldn't think. You look in the master's study. We'll search down here. I'm bound to be somewhere. I've never done this before. No. And you never do again without me, Errol, don't you? Understood? Understood. Thank you. Welcome. So, are we friends, then? Eh? I didn't mean to be horrid. Yeah. My fault for telling fibs. When you're somewhere you shouldn't be, you say the first thing that comes into your head sometimes, don't you? Especially because I was scared. Scared? Yeah. Being caught hiding in a strange house. But, but you knew you were going to have a job here. It was only a bed out in the cold for one night, even if he did break in. Even so. I think it's awful that people don't have beds to go to. Is your bed here all right? It's just fine. Listen, Tom, you've been very nice to me, but I'd still like you to keep all of this under your head, if that's all right. And I'd like you to keep this place under your hat. Nobody knows I come here. Only you. Spit and shake. I have any choice. Look after Harriet, please. I can't. No, we're, we're Tom? Now, what rhymes with Thomas St. John, where on earth have you been? I've been looking everywhere for you. I've spent the last 
hour and 30 minutes. Been worried after death. Hey, 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 he's here now. Don't frighten the boy. Don't frighten the boy. What do you think he's been doing to me for the last two hours? A moment ago, it was only an hour and 30 minutes. Don't you split hairs with me. <laughs> it is not funny. I was just about to tell the master and mistress. Yeah, all right. All right. Sorry. Just calm down. Where did you find him? We was, uh, in there. The boy was showing me his old toys. I looked in there 20 minutes ago. Then we were probably in the garden. Look, I haven't had time to find my way around half the house. I found him in the scullery and asked him to show me the stables. Don't go on at him. It's my fault, not his. Go to the nursery, please, Tom. Your sister's been most anxious about you as well. Hey, hey. I'm sorry you were worried. He's a boy. Let him off a leash a bit. I'm not paid to let my children off the leash. I'm paid to look after them, and I will do it as I see fit. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Poor little blighters. No, I know. What are you doing giving me frights like that for? Sorry, Nanny, I couldn't resist it. Well, make more of an effort next time, if you please. Yes. New here, are you? Yes, Nanny. Well, I'll let it go this time, as soon as you knew. But don't you try taking liberties with me again. No, Nanny. And don't go telling anyone I was peeking where I shouldn't, either. No, all right. I won't. So it wasn't about your reference, then? No. Is there anything I can do? I only wish there were. Well, you could look after Bertie for me tomorrow. That would help a bit. Yeah, of course. Well, Mr. Ferris says I don't have to put up with it, so I'm not going to, and that's that. I know you all think I'm country fond, but I'm learning very fast indeed. So, Anna, which King's Dinner are you going to? I'm not going to any. Oh? You want to come to the one in our street? It'd be fun. Proper dinner, mug of beer, a bit of a sing song. It's all free, it'll be a laugh. I can't, really. Well, of course you can't. Matty will be there, won't you, doll? Yeah, I will. Come on, we'll make a party of it. I'd like that. Come on, Anna, we'll all go. I think Anna might have other things to attend to. My family's going abroad tomorrow. There'll be lots to do. Oh, never mind. We can still go, though, can't we? See? The finest treasures of the Orient, Nanny. But it's just a lot of old pots. Mm. Oh, very pretty pots and all that, but... But just pots. I thought it was going to be something extraordinary, but... Thank you very much for showing me. Now, best get these back to the nursery. You stupid girl! Oh, no, it couldn't have been very valuable, could it? You're not too sad about Mama and Papa going away for a bit, then? No, I've still got you. And me. Everything will be perfectly all right while your parents are gone. Wash your hands for dinner now, please, Master Albert. Off you go. Well, what happened? Now that they've found you, will you go back and housekeep for your uncle? Oh, I don't think so. I'd much rather stay here. Oh, by the way, Mrs. St. John has invited Master Albert over to spend the day with Tom and Harry tomorrow to cheer him up. So may I take my day off? After Master and Mistress have left. Naturally.
a stupid joke on my part, Father. And it went dreadfully wrong. I can only apologize. How did you get in? I took the spare key from the pantry. Shung. Over 3,000 years old. Lydia. It's not the girl's fault. I told you. Lydia, please take Ivo back to the nursery. His lordship will speak with you later. Fowler, can you help Lydia upstairs? I always did know how to make an entrance, eh, Pa? You're a complete ass, Hugh. Always were. Welcome home. be dismissed. When you go down to see his lordship, you tell the truth and shame the devil. You admit to folly and insolence and apologize with humility. But it was Lord Hugh. Master Hugh is the young gentleman of the house. Now go along. Actually, Connie, even the ancient Chinese sometimes threw rotten pots. He wasn't that special. Well, the value is not the point. The point is that Hugh took advantage of a young girl's ignorance and naivety to make a fool of her. Now, you two may laugh it off, but how do you think she's feeling right now? I held up my hands. What more do you want? I want you to make it right with her. What were you saying yesterday about the highest in the land having a duty of service to the lowest? Well, how's she to recognize value unless it's taught to her? Weston is waiting to see you, sir. Is she now? <clears throat> Radio, thank you. Won't be a tick. Not a Republican, are we, Connie? Be the very best of boys for Mama. Leave everything safe in your kibble hands, what? That's the spirit. piece I broke really 3,000 years old. Only it didn't look like much. Well, this particular Chinese emperor used to eat off rough clay plates that were made that morning and broken that night to stop any lesser mortal using them. Well, there's a thing. Trick is, Weston. Never judge a book by its cover. I think that's what we all need to remember from this little episode. Yes, sir. Nor a pot by its colour. Oh, yes. That's the ticket. You seem to know an awful lot about history in that, sir. Oh, everyone has something they're good at. Yes. That's what Nanny Collins says. That's where I first heard it. Well, I'm certainly more at home among ancient pots than cooking pots, I'll tell you that. I'm preparing dinner for a hundred people this evening. I'm quite out of my depth. Oh, no, that's what I'm good at, see. Been making harvest supper since I was ten. Meat and potato pie the lot. Have you by Jove? What happened, girl? Have you been dismissed? Oh, I'll talk to him. I can't be expected to manage on my own at such short notice. I'm being dismissed. Oh! First he showed me round the china room, so I wouldn't need to be curious anymore. Oh? And then. He said I could make up for the breakage by helping him and all the other lords make a big supper down the East End tonight. Oh. I don't know what to say, Hannah. Oh, my heart would be sore to lose. Not as sore as yours, of course, but... But on, on the other hand, too, think of Billy grown up as a great lord with everything hard desires, and you and me with easy life. It's hard to say no. Well, that's just it, isn't it? Oh, I don't know what to 
do. Let's play the game. Yes. Let's play a game and make it easier. Pretend Billy is his father and imagine in your head um, whatever your William said about family, school, all things. And then see if you'd like it for Billy. Uh, he said that I was the um, first person to ever say I love you. Oh. I can't. I can't do it, Mrs. B. <sighs> Goodbye, easy life. I have no excuses, Harry. I simply lost my nerve. It just suddenly seems so cold and calculating. It's not treacherous? To you? <laughs> to your husband. I'm ashamed to say that wasn't the first thought in my mind. Don't laugh at me, Harry. I'm not. Matter of fact, I'm smiling with relief. I didn't like the idea of severing relations quite yet. I seem to have got rather attached, Victoria. Is it so wrong to hanker after a little romance? No, my dear, it is not. But you have to forgive me, I tend to go like a bull at a gate. Get out of the habit of being tender. I feel very foolish. I think you're a delight. Now just wait here, will you? We won't be long. So, <clears throat> I'm ever so sorry, but I shan't be able to come with you tonight. Well, I should think not. Not if you're hobnobbing with all the big wigs. It's really exciting for you, Lydia. Do you know where you'll be? St Mark's Hall, Inkerman Street, Lioness. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> what have I done wrong now? <laughs> I'm so sorry to have dragged you all the way down here just to say I've changed my mind. Well, better now than when it's too late, Miss Randall. That's the way the tragedies are made. Mm -hmm. Well, no matter how hard it is for me and Billy, I can't part with them. Well, I can't say I blame you. I wouldn't part with them if he was mine. <laughs> I wish you the best of fortune. Thank you. Gareth Cake. Mm. Speciality of Poland. Ah, how splendid. Mm -hmm. I won't. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. May I? There you go. Yes. <laughs> oh, we could take as much of that as he can give him. <laughs> no, I take him out to see all the flags, and he he waves his little hand. Shall we go and look at all the pretty flags? <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> so, what do you think? Splendid. It's my mother's recipe. For what it's worth, Miss Randall, I think you've made the right decision. Afternoon, we out, China. Hello, Skipper. <laughs> Tom. You two upstairs, please. I'll take Bertie in. Bye, Bertie. I would be most grateful if you kept your slang to yourself in future. Afternoon, Mummy. Such a fine day. I really must get back to Berkeley Square, Mrs. B, or they'll wonder where I've got to. Miss Thomas and I will take you in the cab. Thank you. Enjoy your king's dinner tonight. I have excellent appetite. Lily, did you see a young lady with a baby passing by? 
Well, what in a fancy grey frock? Look at her. Who is she? Well, she just got in a big carriage up the end of the street. Why? I swear I was not party to this. Where is my baby? The Halifax train leaves St Pancras on the hour. You can manage without Lydia this evening, Mrs Collins. Perfectly well, thank you, Your Ladyship. You sure you won't join your father for the King's dinner here? Lord, no. You put up new wallpaper, Connie. Do you object? No. Why on earth should I? If anyone's going to accompany Pa on an outing, it should be you. One merely feels that it should take longer than a few weeks to earn such a favour. But Mama would never have allowed a nursemaid to go. Americans have such strange ideas sometimes, don't you think? Apparently, the, the woman who was organizing this side of things has gone down with colic. Wow. Best gone with it then, haven't we? <laughs> Get your hands away. What is it? Why have we stopped? The streets were laid out for a party. Seeing someone off. Aren't you going to come in, Mrs. B? It's starting in a sec. Not yet. You go on. Well, at least come in and have your photograph took. You might never have another chance. I have. Lady Harmonsworth, this won't bring back your son. Now, please. William is gone. And I am going to have to live with that for a lot longer than you are. Now, give me my child. No. Make her a contract. Give her whatever she wants. And I shall take that contract. And I shall show it to everyone I can, to the newspapers, dignitaries. Do you really think Mr. Scott would give it to you? No, I shan't give it to her. I'll take it to the papers myself. And I suspect I know a great many more influential editors than Miss Randall does. Another two minutes, Your Worship, then drain that sink, mash them, and put in a bit of butter about the size of a cox's orange pippin. Is there any salt on the table? Don't think so. Best put in another teaspoon of then, I think. Right you are, Weston. And a hell of a carrot, your lordship. Five minutes and we'll be there. Say some for me, eh? Of course. My best girls, Lydia. I'm going with you. <laughs> Lovely young lady 
up on stage with the band, do you think? How long did your ladyship say the journey was? As long as it takes, Clarissa. Uh, uh, Mrs. Bronowski was my landlady when I first came to London. Uh, she's been very kind to me. What did you do? Uh, Hannah is so stupid. She takes my only grandchild for a walk and doesn't come back for hours and hours. Uh, Richie Scott, mm. I'm an old friend of the family. Uh, Mrs. Bronowski's family. How do you do? So, Richie, let's take a place before there is no place left. Everything all right? Yes. Right! Everyone raise your glasses, please. Now, a rousing cheer. God save the king after three. Everybody ready? Who's smiling? One, two, three. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. 